Welcome to Andy's Garage. I'm Andy Phillips. Today I'm going to show you how to remove the fuel tank from a Chevy Trailblazer. Now this is the 5.3 liter V8. Let's go ahead and get started. So coming in here from the back, what we have there is our filler hose going into the tank. And then right up above it there on the left of it, that harness. That is actually for the tank pressure sensor. So we'll have to disconnect that as well. And now let's come underneath and I'll show you the um, straps and the crossbar. Now you wanna make sure that you get your vehicle off the ground. What I have here is some Rhino ramps that I have it on. Highly recommend those. If you wanna see a product review I did, you can do so via the link above, also down in the description. In addition to that, I also have jack stand as well. You always want to be safe when you're going under the vehicle. Now, if you can get the spare tire out of there, this is our strap holding it on. And if we come underneath here, you'll see there's a 15 millimeter bolt up there that we're going to have to remove. Then if we come down here, a little further down, we have this crossbar here. You have two 15 millimeters on each side that'll need to be removed. And then working our way down. Right here is another fuel tank strap. You can see there's the 15 millimeter there. 15 millimeter there. That one's easy to get to. The other one's tucked up in there, which is why you'll need the 12 inch extension. Coming here on the front end of the fuel tank, there's our fuel filter. If you want to see a video I did on how to diagnose a faulty fuel filter, you can check that out via the link above, also down below. I'll also have down in the description a link on how to replace the fuel filter. We'll need to remove this line here, and then we also have these other fuel lines here, these two, that'll also need, also need to be removed. And once we get things further down, then we'll have the harness up top to the fuel pump itself and then there's another harness up there as well that we'll have to remove in order to clearly get the tank out of there okay now that we've kind of got a glance at what we're going to be getting into next thing that we want to do is we want to go ahead and get the pressure out of the fuel lines and for this video what i'm going to do i'm going to go ahead and start the vehicle we're going to remove the fuel pump relay switch let it empty itself out, and then we'll come underneath at the fuel filter at that Schrader valve and release any additional pressure from there as well. We'll put the pan underneath for that, and that way everything is clear so we can start disconnecting stuff. I'm not going to go through in detail. I'm just going to show quickly as we take care of those things, and then we'll regroup underneath to start getting the fuel tank out of there. Next, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the battery as well. Now, these are the items that you're going to need. You're going to need some kind of an oil pan because when we disconnect the fuel lines, you're still going to get a little bit that sprays out from the Schrader valve, and sometimes you'll get some drip coming out of the lines when you disconnect them. You're also going to need a rag for cleanups that definitely comes in handy. Next, you're gonna need a ratchet. And with that, you're gonna need two sockets. You're gonna need a 15 millimeter and a seven millimeter socket. You are gonna need a 12 inch extension for the rear strap of the fuel tank. It's kind of tucked up in there, so you'll need that. You will need a flathead screwdriver to release the fuel pressure from the Schrader valve underneath. And we'll get into that in a minute. Definitely some safety glasses anytime you're messing with releasing fuel pressure or disconnecting fuel lines, you wanna make sure you have eye protection on. Then you are gonna need some kind of a hydraulic jack and some blocking to put on there. That comes in handy for lowering the fuel tank and also raising it into place when you're putting a new one back up. But in this case, since we're only removing it, you're gonna need that for lowering it. So these are the items that you'll need.
So now let's take a look at this one up here. So what you have here, you can see right there on the bottom and then up on the top. So you have these two little knobs here, top and bottom. And let me see if I get in closer. But when you push them down, it releases the clip on the inside. And then what you're able to do is then pull this out like that. And then we just pull that out. Let it drip if there's anything in there. So now as you can see here, all the lines on this end are disconnected, all the fuel lines. Let's head around back so we can release the fuel filler hose and the fuel, fuel pump pressure sensor, uh, the harness to it. And then we can start releasing all the brackets and straps so we can lower this thing. Coming in here from the back, we can see up here, this is the fuel filler hose. And let's see if we look up here where it connects to the fuel filler neck, you'll see that you have this hose clamp that can be removed with either a seven millimeter socket or with a flathead screwdriver. And then right here we have the harness that connects into the fuel tank pressure sensor and we'll need to disconnect that. There's a little tab. Let's see. There we go. If you lift the tab and pull it, you'll be able to disconnect it as we did right here. And let me see if I can show you here on the other side. Here's the tab right there on the bottom, as you can see there. And all you have to do is just pull that back to slide it over the clip and it comes right off. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the four 15 millimeter bolts holding this crossbar in place that goes underneath the fuel tank. As you can see here, these are pretty aged and kind of rusted up. It's not a bad idea to hit it with some penetrating oil. Let that sink in a little bit. That way you don't break them off. They can be on very tight. You might want to use a breaker bar or an impact wrench if need be. But let's go ahead and remove that and then we'll be back. Okay. That one's doing good. Let's try this one. All right. Last bolt is down. We did the other side already. So we're gonna, let's see, get this down. And then we'll go ahead and put the jack underneath the fuel tank so we can release the straps. So I have the jack centered with the block right in the middle of the fuel tank. That way we still have access to both straps. We're just gonna go ahead and support it and then once the straps are off, we can gently lower it down and slide it out. There we go. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and remove the rear strap first. And there's the 15 millimeter bolt is tucked up a little bit. And that's where we're going to use the 12 inch extension on the ratchet. So let's go ahead and get that in place. And sometimes these can be tight as well. Let's see what we got. All right. All right, that one's actually not too bad. So this one's coming off without having to use an impact wrench or anything. You may want to put some penetrating oil on these as well, just in case. But like I said, we lucked out. So I'm going to take this one off, and then we'll be back to do the front one. Okay, so this is the front one, another 15 millimeter. You can see I saturated that as well. We're going to use the socket and ratchet without an extension all right and that one's actually moving pretty decent so let me go ahead and remove it and we'll be back remove this by hand and now the brackets can be removed let's head underneath and i'll show you how to remove it so this is where it connects in can just take it and should be able to just twist it out like that and then slides right out the other one I don't believe we can but let's go ahead and take a look if not we'll just push that out of the way oh please make sure you have it supported because at this point once that moves this thing is kind of loose and I believe it's tucked up there which it is so I don't think we can remove it. 
So what I'm going to do is just kind of bend it like this, just out of the way. So let's push it out of the way, and then we'll start lowering the fuel tank. I want to come down slow because we are going to have to disconnect a couple things on the other end as it comes lower. And here it comes. Okay, bring it down. Let's head behind it and see what needs to be disconnected now that we have more access. There we go. Okay, so now with lowering this, we have this harness here. We're going to go ahead and push that and just bring that down because that particular line is connected, as you can see right up here on the frame. So you don't want to pull on that, but this part here comes down. There we go. So that's now off. And then we have over here that filler hose, which is still not low enough. So we'll lower it a little bit more and then we'll be able to pop that off. Now with the fuel tank lowered a little bit, we can come on top and you can see there is our fuel pump assembly with that white plug right there being the harness. So we need to disconnect that before we fully lower it so we don't rip that. So let's go ahead and disconnect that and then we can bring this thing out. You have this little clip on top, raise that up and we should be able to, there you go, slide that off. And that's it. You can see there, it'll come off. So I'm just gonna pull that down and then we'll be able to, and that fuel tank may drop. So let's pull this, there we are. So now we can finish lowering it. And bring it down gently. Pull that out, and there it goes. Push that, and push that down a little bit, and there we go. Let's pull that out. Unless you can get the vehicle up in the air high enough, you're not going to get it out through the back. It's easier just to pull it out through the side, so that's what we're going to do. Okay, well that's pretty much it. The fuel tank is out. Now, in the case here, I'm just gonna be doing the, the uh, fuel pump uh, sending unit right here. But if you wanted to actually replace the fuel tank, clean it out, whatever you wanna do, then you may wanna jack the carp a little bit more to slide it out. And then when it's time to put it back in, we're gonna pretty much do the same thing. So you would then just hoist it up into place and then go ahead and reattach everything. So that wraps up this video. I hope it was informative for you. I hope it helped you out. Please send me any questions, comments. I would love to hear from you. As always, I appreciate all the support. Please like this video, subscribe to the channel. I'll see you next time.